Okay, YouTube. Hey, we're in uh, my F-150, right? And uh, the door is open. <laughs> the key is in the ignition. And uh, I'm getting a check light to come on. And of course, when it first came on, I'm like, ah, I pulled over, checked the antifreeze, checked the little, you know, checked all the major stuff. I didn't have a scan tool. Got home, uh, checked it on a scan tool. And what am I pulling? I'm uh, pulling a, a b 10 f one code, which is the door chime. You're like, what's that do? Well, it's tied in with the memory seats. It's also tied in with the remote start. And this truck would consistently forget about the memory seats. I didn't really care about that. Once in a while, it would not, uh, it would not remote start, which I just figured was a computer glitch. But it turns out <coughs> what it is, is, uh, and hopefully you can see this, you see how I just wiggled that? Okay, and suddenly my power seat moves where it's supposed to be. So I'm guessing that it is the lock cylinder being loose itself and not the housing. Uh, the housing is like an, an all day project to take the column apart and uh, I'm gonna pull this key out so we don't have to hear it. And uh, changing out a lock cylinder, well that's child's play, okay? So I, uh, I'm going to be dropping my key off at, at the local Ford dealer so they can uh, key another lock cylinder to this key. And then I'll show you how to replace the lock cylinder and uh, fix this problem. So, all right. Talk to you later, YouTube. Okay, folks. Let's pretend that we're looking at the bottom of the steering column. And I'm just going to explain this this way because it's easier. These Three screws are seven millimeters. There's a tab that you just tug straight back on the top side. Next, on the bottom side of the of the steering column, you have three seven thirty seconds inch screws. And then you've got two tabs. If you push, if you turn the steering wheel so that the top of the steering wheel is to the right, you will be able to like like up and down. Ooh, I can't shake the camera. All right. Um, so the top of the steering wheel is like this. You will expose this side and you can take a, a, a screwdriver or whatever and just push a little pin in there and start working the two halves loose. Then turn the steering wheel the other way and again you'll be able to push this tab in and start working uh, the bottom half loose. You can leave the top half right where it's at. See that tab? There's a tab like this on this side, and there's a tab like the, on the other side. Using a pick tool, I'm going to try to do this while looking through the camera. So forgive me how uncoordinated I am. Oh dear. I'm seriously uncoordinated looking through the camera. All right. There's one half. Okay. And then I can probably get it with my... Oh dear. The things we do. And then, uh, there we go. Okay, so now, just let that hang down. Let, let this just hang down. That's the sensor that senses the position of the key. Now, we gotta look straight up. This pin right, right here you push and that allows the locking mechanism to slide on out with the key. You turn the key uh, to like run or whatever, and then uh, push on, on this pin, and it's through a little hole, and you'll be able to pull out the entire lock cylinder. Okay, so I'm super shaky here. So now we, I'm looking through the camera. So basically you just stick the lock cylinder in with the key and you turn it and you make sure that that index, that little bumpy thing is on the bottom side and you rotate the key once it's bottomed until the lock cylinder locks in. And that's all you have to do. The reverse order here, you just kind of... Oh gee, you wouldn't believe how hard this is to do with one hand. 
<laughs> so now we should be able to stick the key in. Where's the key? And start the car. <laughs> 